Okay, so this video, for anyone who's interested, is concerning Chinese politics. Um, I've just been looking up an article, uh, something I already knew really, but I'll quote this. Yes, it is from Wikipedia, but um, what happened, happened. Um, it's about Liu Xiaoqi, who was president of the People's Republic of China between... 1959 and 1968. Um, for anyone who has some idea about the Cultural Revolution, he's perhaps the most famous victim, apart from Deng Xiaoping, to have um, been a victim of the Cultural Revolution. He's perhaps the most famous. Um, I'm just going to read out a bit about uh, what happened to him. Just so you know the context here, he was uh, President of the People's Republic of China. But Chinese communist politics is quite a complex matter. Um, president, especially at that time, didn't necessarily mean the most powerful position. Mao had absolute power. And um, at this time, Mao wasn't technically president, but he was leader of the party, chairman of the, chairman of the Communist Party, hence Chairman Mao. So um, you could look at it as Liu Xiaoqi was sort of second in command second most powerful figure, so to speak. Um, and he was Mao's chosen successor. But Mao grew suspicious of him and he became a liability. And what I'm going to read out is a good example of uh, what befell anyone who fell out of Chairman Mao. Um, Liu, along with Deng Xiaoping, were denounced as capitalist rulers. Um, and during the peak of the Cultural Revolution, Mao had directed the Red Guards to destroy all state and party institutions. He was trying to destroy the party and build up a cult around himself. Anyway, um, by 1967, Liu and his wife Wang Guangmei were placed under house arrest in Beijing. Liu was removed from all his positions and expelled from the party in October 1968. After his arrest, Liu disappeared from public view. Um, after his arrest, he was beaten regularly at public denunciation meetings. He was denied medical attention for his diabetes by then a long-term illness and for pneumonia, which he developed under his arrest. Liu was eventually given treatment only when Zhang Qing feared he would die. That's Madame Mao, for those of you who don't know. A very sadistic woman. I've put that bit in, obviously. She desired that Liu be kept alive to serve as a living target during the Ninth Party Congress in 1969. At the Congress, Liu was denounced as a traitor and an enemy agent. Zhou Enlai read the party verdict that Liu was a criminal traitor, enemy agent and scab in the service of the imperialists, modern revisionists and the Gu Mintang reactionaries. Liu's conditions did not improve after he was denounced in the Congress and he died soon afterward. Interviews of Mao's surviving colleagues show Mao seemed to enjoy toying with his victims before eliminating them. For example, he called Liu in from house arrest and told him he was pleased with Liu's self-criticism. However, almost immediately afterward, he permitted Liu's public beating and torture, which continued for more than a year, subsequently killing him in 1969. Liu died within a month of his expulsion from the party. Several weeks after his death, Red Guards discovered Liu lying on the floor, covered in diarrhea and vomit, with a foot of unkempt hair protruding from his scalp. At midnight, under secrecy, his remains were brought in a jeep to a crematorium, his legs hanging out the back, and he was cremated under the name Liu Wei Huang. The cause of death was recorded as illness. Liu's family was not informed for another three years after this date, and his death was not made public to the people of China for ten years. In February 1980, two years after Deng Xiaoping came to power, the fifth plenum of the 11th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, issued the resolution on the rehabilitation of Comrade Liu Xiaoqi. The resolution not only declared Liu's Uster to be on justice, but called him a great Marxist and proletarian revolutionary, and one of the principal leaders of the party. It also removed the labels of renegade, traitor and scab that had been attached to him at the time of his death. It blamed Liu's Uster and Lin Biao, charging him with concocting false evidence against Liu and working with the Gang of Four to subject him to political frame-up and physical persecution. A memorial was held for Liu on May the 17th, 1980, and his ashes were scattered in the sea at Qingdao in accordance with his last wishes. 
there is um, footage at least, uh, or at least photographs available of those last moments. This man suffered an uh, agonizing death, humiliation, mental torment, um, and he's, as I say, perhaps the most famous fatality of the Cultural Revolution, Deng Xiaoping lived. Um, there was millions of others who suffered similar fates. Um, I think what this shows is several things. It shows what a total sadist Mao Zedong was. How ruthless he was. And it also shows that sadly China um, still has to move on from the Mao cult. It's good that Liu Xiaoqi was rehabilitated under Deng Xiaoping, but you'll notice that um, Mao escaped all blame for the persecution this man suffered. Um, instead, Lin Bao and the Gang of Four were blamed for it. Now, I don't doubt that they probably had some role in his death, but you see there, that's an example of Mao being exonerated of everything. And this is very characteristic. Um, unfortunately, the cult of Mao does persist in China and I am convinced that China cannot really move forward until it really addresses this. Yes it's a fast growing economy, yes it's a major military power, yes it's made phenomenal progress but until China ends the cult of Mao I think the party is going to face a serious crisis. Um, Actually, after the reading that article, I looked up um, a piece on the um, situation that is facing the Chinese Communist Party today. Um, you may be aware that Bo Xilai was deposed last year. Now, the interesting outcome of his trial, it was a very high-profile trial. Uh, Bo Xilai was an ultra-Maoist, a populist leader in Chongqing. He, he was famous for cracking down on organized crime but others have accused him of including dissidents in those he targeted, rather than just common criminals. Um, very significant figure in the party, and he was tipped as a future president. But like I say, he was an ultra-Maoist. And his fate, the outcome of the trial, was a lot, um, a lot more lenient than what he would have done to his political opponents as an ultra-Maoist. Um, China Forbidden News ran a report which was very significant. Um, it said that uh, had he come to power, it's very likely that Hu Jintao and Wen Jiabao would have been executed as traitors. Um, I'm pleased Bo Xilai got deposed. Why? Because he would have been um, Mao Zedong Part 2. The man was dangerous. Um, everything I've seen from him just shows that he is Mao written all over him very dangerous individual and his sentence is a lot more lenient than what he would have done to his enemies um, I, th I believe his sentence was seven years don't quote me on that I might be wrong but it's not a life sentence it's a custodial sentence he has a prison in a suburb in the north of Beijing he has his own uh, exercise yard his own cell um, he's not treated as a common criminal he's uh, definitely been given special treatment there's no doubt about that and I think the reason is the party recognises that if it was to, for example, execute him, his supporters would possibly stage something of a coup. Bo Xilai remains insanely popular in Chongqing, and he almost has his own personality cult. Um, but this is an internal crisis the party is facing. Uh, the Maoist factions are very significant. Um, from my understanding, and I'm by no means an expert, the current leadership is not Maoist. So the Xi Li leadership, so to speak, the current generation, is following on from Hu Jintao and Wen Jiaobao. They're following in the, um, so to speak, anti-Maoist faction. Um, of course, they won't publicly say that, because it's still far too taboo to publicly um, criticise Chairman Mao in China. Um, perhaps they do fear some sort of coup. They fear instability if they were to really denounce Mao Zedong. But I would like to see a Chinese leader with the courage to recognize that China has to move forward. With the courage to denounce Mao 
for these brutal crimes that he um, committed. It's no good just rehabilitating people and saying things like, oh, Mao made mistakes. I think everything um, indicates that Mao was a callous tyrant. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. It doesn't matter what achievements he had. They could be considered progressive. It really doesn't matter. Because Mao was a tyrant. There's no way to gloss that over. He deliberately attacked the party in order to cause instability in the country. And... He fostered the personality cult around him. He did control it. He did influence it. And contrary to what people say, he did have power over the Red Guards. So I don't accept this argument that they were out of control and he couldn't do anything about it. Um, he had absolute power in the minds of those young people who went out and caused a rampage. And they would have jumped off a cliff if Mao had told them to. So I don't accept this argument that he had no control over the situation and he tried to limit its excesses. I don't believe that for a second. I believe Mao f knew full well what he was doing. I believe Mao was like Tamerlane the Great, so-called. I believe he was like Genghis Khan. He was a ruthless tyrant. And there really is no other way to gloss it over. Um, the real credit for modernizing China should probably go to people like Lu Xiao Qi, um, who very bravely faced those denunciation ceremonies. Um, not that he had much choice, but you know, where is the credit that goes to him? Yes, he's been rehabilitated, but his persecutor is not the real person who should be vilified, is Mao. And it's very sad to see that the cult of Mao persists. Now, there probably is more freedom of expression being permitted in China than there was in the past, and that's a good thing. But the Maoist factions remain very strong, and so long as they have any influence, they're going to cripple any freedom of expression. Now, China is not a country that's known for freedom of expression, especially when it comes to criticising the Communist Party. Um, but it does have a very large cyberspace. Okay, it's controlled by the party. But there is room to manoeuvre within that. Um, what I would like to see as an outsider is this hideous cult of Mao collapse. I think what happens is at a time when the party faces any sort of crisis, and at the moment it's facing a crisis over public image in terms of corruption, Xi Jinping really has his work cut out for him. So the party is facing this crisis. And the economy is slowing down. It's so fast, it's so much, f uh, the growth rate is so much higher than Western countries, but it is slowing down. So the party is going to face critical tests in the coming years. And I believe one of the biggest tests, as a China watcher, I would describe myself as a China watcher, one of the biggest tests is going to be these internal factions. Um, and how influential the Mao factions are going to be. It would be an absolute catastrophe if China decided to go down the path of Maoism again. It would be catastrophic because there would be a potential for a second cultural revolution. This is speculation on my part. I'm not saying this is a fact. It's it's speculation based on what I know. Um, and I just hope China's leadership has the pragmatism, the courage, and the willpower to not let that happen. Um... They've probably taken the right approach with Bo Xi Lai. I mean, personally, um, I do think it's wrong that he is treated more leniently than a common criminal. But in Chinese politics, you have to look at the context. And if they were to treat him as a common criminal and just execute him, they would instantly martyrise him and that would cause a coup. And if the Maoists got into power, that would be a devastating situation. It would just turn the clock back years. Um, what I want to see in the future is a China that acknowledges Mao's crimes, that allows free expression on debating Mao Zedong, that doesn't persecute the people who do criticise Mao's legacy, that permits the publication of critical books like Mao the Unknown Story, and that um, stops glorifying this man. Mao Zedong was a callous, cold-blooded tyrant. It doesn't matter what achievements he'd done. 
he, he had to his name. All the evidence shows that to be a fact. Um, and this is just an example of it. His callous treatment of um, Lu Xiaoqi. The politics is a dirty business in any language. But if Mao was really a benevolent figure, he would have been a little bit more humane to his enemies. His treatment of Lu Xiaoqi contradicts that.